Hey guys, what's going on? Another uh, video here, and I know we are absolutely mutilating this horse on the sample card data, but uh, we're getting a lot of questions about the estimated rarity of some of these things, and I wanted to um, kind of parse the information a little more to address some of the questions that have come up. So I've added this additional tab in the spreadsheet uh, to talk about the population size or the number of distinct quantities of cards that we saw across the 12 packs that were open on YouTube, the 12 sample card packs. So I've color coded this and anything you see in green here indicates that that was the only copy that was found across the 12 packs. If it's in blue, then there were two copies of that particular card. So as an example here, Midland Mercenaries, a Jeff Mengus uh, artwork, there were two copies of that spell found across the two, the uh, 12 packs. You see it showed up here in pack one and then it shows up over here in pack three. Um, and then the orangish, orangish um, color here is cards that showed up three times, um, so three copies across 12 packs. And then I've, so if, if you scroll across, something pretty interesting here is you see a lot of green, right? So there's only one distinct copy of a number of these cards going over to pack six here. And then your second row is pack seven through 12, a lot of green showing up and some orange, which you typically see. So the orange, again, is three copies of those cards. Um, I think that only occurred for the ordinary rarity cards. So for the unique, exceptional, and elite rarity, or let me, let me uh, say that in order. So unique is the most rare, then elite, and then exceptional. There was only one copy of those um, higher level rarities. So those, those cards look to be particularly rare. And then you got to fill the pack somehow, right? So there's uh, in these packs, there was in the first slot when we open up Alpha, we're going to find an avatar card or one of the site or Atlas cards. Um, however, in these packs, what we were finding as he was opening them is there was a unique or, or elite card in the first slot, which became the hit slot. Then there were three exceptionals, and then you fill the pack with 11 ordinaries, right? So there's 15 cards in a pack, 11 ordinaries. Um, as you would expect, you're going to find some duplicates there. And if this were, if this was in the earlier stages of production, it could be that there was less cards um, that were fully designed and ready to go test for print. Um, however, the counterpoint there is um, the team may have included a broader distribution of cards or sampling of cards, um, however you want to coin it, meaning uh, a bunch of different distinct cards just to, which is commonsensical, right? They'd want to see as many cards as they can see them uh, in print on the card from the printer and get a sense for the color satu saturation and just kind of the look and feel of that card so they can make adjustments and um, iterate and go and change the design or ask the printer to, to make some tweaks if they want it to appear differently. Um, so that's what I wanted to point out here. Let me, let me keep going, scrolling from left to right for packs 7 through 12. Um, still a lot of green, some blue, so some there's two copies at the ordinary level or three copies at the ordinary level. Um, but the top three, uh, four poles, excuse me, in the pack where you get from, from slot one, your elite or unique, in this case, an elite blasted oak. That's a Dan Seagrave uh, artwork. And then your three exceptionals, those are always green, um, meaning only one copy in every single pack. Let's go back and look from the top, right? So only one copy for the four, I'll call them all four as hit slots because they're they're more rare, even the exceptionals are, are pretty limited here. So going left to right, pack one through eight, everything's green, right? You're looking at the, the top four cards here. Everything's green, meaning there's only one copy of all of those. And then the second six packs, starting from pack seven, first four cards, everything green across the board. So very interesting. Um, those cards seem to be pretty limited. I mean, 12 packs isn't a massive sample size, but it's the only thing we've seen publicly, so that's what we have to go off of. Um, and then we're going to see like a smattering of packs across the Kickstarter tiers with the Avatar of the Realm. They get four packs. Uh, the Collector tiers, there were four, or there are 24 of those offered. They will get four packs each. And then there was uh, 100 of the Sorcerer, they called it the Sorcerer Early Bird. Apparently, I can't say the word sorcerer. Uh, they call it the uh, early bird um, special, right? So there's 100, and they get only one pack. So uh, no single person is going to end up with a ton of these. I, I know that a bunch of people um, leveraged their network or just had a fast internet speed and somehow pulled off getting multiple collector tiers. 
Um, but that doesn't really move the needle. You know, there's only 24 offered. So even if you got like two or three of those, let's say in an extreme case, um, those people are going to get four per collector pledge. Um, so if they got two or three, they're going to get eight to 12 packs. Um, so they're going to get something probably comparable to this, right? This distribution where they're going to have potentially a bunch of one ofs of the elites or uniques and exceptionals, and then maybe some duplicates at the, or at the ordinary level. But the set size is massive, right? So there's not going to be a lot of copies of any individual card. And that's what I think is why you're seeing extreme value in these auctions. Um, so far, we had an auction of the Spear of Destiny that sold for $2,000. Um, there was another private sale that I that I helped make happen that was in a similar neighborhood for another Spear of Destiny. Um, so those are coming off the market quick. And then there was um, a couple other uh, public auctions that we've done so far where we had the, the Jeff Menges card uh, for Ogre Goons last week. That went for $500. And then this weekend, we had an auction close last night um, for the Icelands card, and that went for $750. That was an exceptional card. Um, so that kind of validates the value um, and the scarcity and just the premium people put on exceptionals, elites, and uniques. Although I haven't auctioned in a unique yet, but unique is up there with, um, excuse me, I haven't auctioned an elite yet. Elite is up there with the uniques in terms of rarity. So those are going to be pretty valuable, pretty hard to come by. I mean, I, I can't even guarantee that I'll be able to get my hands on another unique to offer because um, I'm not sure if folks will be willing to sell or not. But uh, on the other hand, demand is strong right now and, and value is at a premium. So uh, if anyone out there wants to sell something, just reach out to me and um, we'll make it happen at the auction. I'm trying to get as many public data points as we can through auction uh, so we can really see the true value of this. Um, in early auctions, there were a, a number of bids, probably like three to five people um, that, were evolved, that were involved in the lower price points. Um, Spear of Destiny was a little unique because we opened that at $500 and there was probably three or four players early on. And then when we got over $1,500, it dropped to two and those two folks bid it up to $2,000. Um, the other ones, I think I opened at a $200 price point and there was, uh, again, for the first couple of auctions or with the Ogre Goons, I think we had a few players involved and it finally settled at 500 and then this weekend, I think, has been particularly validating because we've seen a few uh, new bidders come into the fold. So um, the way I read that is I think there's there's more interest. Um, the, the market's growing. You know, the Facebook group is growing every day. We're over uh, 1,000 members. We hit that milestone a few weeks ago, and we're getting closer to 1,100 now. So it continues to grow and expand. Um, there's a lot of interest in these sample cards and just more people uh, looking at it and wanting to bid on it. And we're seeing more participants at the higher, higher price point, which is validating to say it's not just like a fluke anomaly where one whale is just uh, scooping them all up. You know, I think it's actually there's been a different buyer for every public auction so far. So that's pretty um, that's great to see that there's a lot of interest and a lot of participation and it's not uh, anomalous. So. Um, the other thing I want to add here, so I'm, I scroll down to the summary. Let me speak to this. Uh, the number of cards with only one copy, there was 104 cards in that population. So the vast majority had only one card, one copy of that card, 58% of the population. And then two copies, there were 24 cards. And then three copies, this was at the ordinary level, there were 51 cards that had three copies across the 12 packs making up 28% of the, of the population. So again, the only one, the, having only one copy in there, um, that was uniformly true for uniques, elites, and exceptional rarity levels. Um, coming down here, looking at the pop size, I covered this in a prior video, there was only four uniques across the 12 packs, uh, only seven elites across the 12 packs. Um, so there was, you know, that makes 11. There was one pack that should have had a unique or a lead, but there was an error and there was neither. And there's only 14 cards in the pack. So that was kind of interesting. But look at these percentages, 2% unique, 4% elite. They're extremely, extremely rare. Um, and that's why these auctions are really popping off. We don't know if or when um, these will, these cards will ever come to market. That's kind of like the, the risk of it. You know, even when cards come out or sample packs come out in Kickstarter, um, if everyone flooded to the market and sold everything, we're talking 292 packs, um, less than a thousand total sample cards and the total population of all the cards. Um, so you're not going to find like multiple copies of any given card. Uh, so some of these are kind of like a, maybe a, 
only one time offering an opportunity um, or, you know, in the future, and it might be a, a couple or a few, but, you know, after we get to release, we're probably going to see more videos from Rudy from Alpha Investments and some of the other YouTubers and people cracking packs. And a lot of the, um, the YouTubers who have been dormant uh, may come alive and do more content. Uh, right now, I've pretty much been the only person grinding and doing content. Uh, there's been Tabletop Royale that's been doing some gameplay video, and I think they're going to start uh, reinvigorating that again. Um, but it's tiny, you know, like I don't have a massive audience. I'm trying to grow it as fast as I can. But um, when we get these larger players involved, there's going to be a lot more awareness, a lot more people coming into the Facebook group, a lot more bidders on these auctions. So, um, you know, it'll be higher demand. Maybe that'll drive price. And even if there's more copies in theory, you know, those could be absorbed by the larger demand and the larger market size. Um, this basic economics there. But it'll be interesting to see. Uh, but anyway, let me let me continue here. So for the ordinaries, uh, there are 132 ordinaries, 74% of the population. And then I broke down spells versus Atlas cards. 162 spells out of 179 total cards, 91% of the population. And then the Atlas cards, only 17. 17 cards across the 12 packs. Very, very small. And I, I did a video on that last time where there was many packs that had no Atlas cards at all. Um, the one pack had two, or maybe a few did, and the most we saw in any given pack was five, five Atlas cards. So those are not those. The, that's interesting because the distribution of those is not what we will see in in, um, in Alpha. It, it's based on what the company has told us so far. Unless they change it, we'll just see that in that first slot, and you're going to get a Avatar or an Atlas card. So you're not going to be pulling a ton of those per pack. Probably just one. Uh, if I'm interpreting that correctly, and then any sample cards, you could pull none. So the Atlas card um, that's for auction today, I'm recording this at 1.35 p.m., and that auction ends at 8 p.m. today, Eastern Time, here in the U.S. Um, that card is uh, pretty limited. You know, there's only 17 Atlas cards in these 12 packs that we've seen. So that's what's out on the streets now, plus the pre decks that have been given to YouTubers. Um, and we estimate that five sets of pre-con decks were given to those folks. Um, and that, you know, that's four pre-con decks uh, for each set that was, that was sent out. Um, and there's some Atlas and Sight cards in there as well, because those are pre-con decks where they're, they're loaded with the, the number of spells and Atlas cards you need to functionally play a game, right? So that's where you get those. Um, but only 17 from these packs, and it's an ordinary rarity, and that card's at uh, $525 at the time of this recording, with about six and a half hours left in the auction. So that's doing extremely well, and people are placing a premium on the on the Atlas cards. Um, that's what I wanted to cover for the sample packs, this additional data. The last point I wanted to make is that there's going to be some big-time announcements coming soon. Tonight, when the auction ends at 8 o'clock, uh, I'm going to announce the next round of auctions, which is going to be a special uh, marathon centered around the Legends of Fantasy Art is the way I've coined it. And that's going to be your Dungeons and & Dragons and TSR uh, era artists and your Alpha Magic the Gathering or early, early stage Magic the Gathering artists. So it'll be a sample cards with illustrations only from those artists. I um, got a shipment in yesterday from, from someone that's allowing me to sell those through auction, and it's going to be a 24-7 um, marathon, one card at a time, 24-hour auctions, only sample cards from legendary artists that have uh, contributed to those prior prior things, D&D and, and Magic the Gathering, and it's going to be one after the next for an undisclosed period of time undisclosed individual cards so you won't know what cards come in what day and we're just going to do it around the clock uh, for at least several days um, maybe a week maybe longer you just have to check in every day and check it out and um, the idea here is to draw a lot of excitement and, and attention to sorcery uh, i'd love to see the market grow a lot of people get excited and passionate about it and this is a fun way to do it and draw interest while we're waiting for the alpha release um, so if you're interested in samples and you're a fan of those big time legendary artists like like I am and so many other passionate fans are, um, definitely stay tuned to the Facebook marketplace, um, Facebook group, Sorcery Contested Realm fan page and marketplace group. Search for that on Facebook or, or look forward in, this, in the notes here and um, or join the Collector Art House Discord 
and I will link that as well and love for you guys to join the community. I, I mirror the auctions in there as well too and I'm gonna be having somebody help me out with um, monitoring both while these are live to make sure that the Facebook page where we officially run these auctions is current with the latest bids, whether those are coming in from Discord or uh, through Facebook. But that is going to be an epic auction marathon event and uh, these cards are freaking amazing. Like I, when they showed up, I was absolutely blown away on just the quality. Um, the quality of the print is great. Uh, the art is just unbelievably incredible. Um, it, it blew away my expectations. I see the pictures on the internet and you know, it's just not the same. When you see it on the card, it's just, uh, it just feels special. And um, these things are really great and uh, people are gonna add to their collection and have some, some incredible pieces of history here. All right, thanks guys. Um, if you liked the video, like and subscribe and share it with your friends and talk to you next time. Take care, peace.